have to forgive me for jumping on the bandwagon with this one, but I just saw some news which got me quite excited. And the more I dug into the details, the more excited I got. And I just needed to share those details with you. See, a few days ago, we did a video about how the whole endurance road category had got completely lost and nothing made sense anymore. And, you know, some of us were uh, turning towards gravel and cyclocross to find that geometry that we wanted for the type of endurance riding that we were really enjoying. And the traditional Cannondale synapse and the Trek Demandis just weren't doing it for us. And then this morning, I opened up, you know, the emails and here I see that Look <laughs> um, have produced what I think is an absolute category killer of a bike. They've just looked at what is going on around them and just went, that's what we need to do. Let's do it. And it's like, if you had to put this in football terms, <laughs> not that I'm a football player, this is like some plucky French defender getting the ball and looking up the field and seeing like all the sort of, you know, the, the top players on the front row, they're all like wearing the aero shorts and, you know, posing for the press. Like the midfield are all like being to McDonald's and they're all sort of sat in a big food coma, unable to move. The defenders are all sort of doing dances for TikToks in the high heels and the goalkeeper is like leaning up against the goalpost and his sort of flat cap and pipe and going, hmm, trouble ahead. You know, that's the sort of thing that's going on. This little plucky French brand has just nailed it with this bike. Um, and like I said, the more I dug into the details, <laughs> the more I got uh, excited by this. Let me explain um, a little bit more. You see, when it came to endurance bikes, I always thought that there was a continuum. On one side, you had like the Trek de Marne, uh, the specialized Roubaix, you know, with all those sort of suspension and ISO speed decouplers, mega wide tires, like on the mattress type of riding, you know, like probably too comfortable and a bit too sluggish. And then on the other side, you had things like the Canyon um, Enduro, which is probably a little bit more towards the like, lightweight climbing bike, still quite stiff and rigid. And in the middle, you always used to have like the Cannondale Synapse. That was always like your benchmark. And you sort of said, for which, does it, which direction does it go from a Cannondale Synapse? Now, in that video, like we talked about, it's all gone bonkers. The Cannondale Synapse has gone crazy steep uh, geometry, great for like city riding, cycle path networks, that sort of thing. And then they put this big battery pack with lights on it and it's just heavy and the, the lights aren't even that powerful. The, Damani and the Roubaix are just getting more and more complicated and heavy with stuff. Um, and on the other side, we have things like the Cannondale Super 6, System 6, sort of blurring the lines with the whole aero and endurance geometry and stuff. And so the whole category is ripe for someone to come in with the right sort of geometry for endurance. And what I mean by that, so endurance to me is your 100 mile sportives in the countryside, in the mountains, you know, those days where you're tired, you're fatigued, you're pushing hard on the hills, but then you're enjoying those long descents. But unlike the pros, we don't have the benefit of closed roads. There's still traffic in the way, there's potholes, there's obstacles, there's, you know, you still need to have, you know, really good, confident handling. Let's face it, we haven't got the bike handling of the pro peloton, you know, to, to do those extreme cornering maneuvers that we see on the Tour de France. Most of us just want to carry as much speed as we're brave enough to carry. And if we hit a pothole or a little cat eye in the middle of the road, that our bike doesn't twitch and become nervous underneath us. We don't want speed wobble. We just want to enjoy that lovely alpine descent, you know, feeling stable in control. And that's what these endurance bikes, I think, should give us, but at the same time, not feel like you're trying to cycle a mattress up an Alpine pass. So I think that look of all the brands have nailed it. Now you're probably thinking, oh yeah, but it'll be like a million dollars. <laughs> it's not. Like <laughs> Before I get into the prices, um, I just want to talk through some of the geometry aspects. Now I've just been looking at a size 56, that's my size, but if you remember from previous videos, we also said how to identify if there's problems in the bigger ranges and the smaller ranges. And looking across, you know, the trail, the head angles, they look pretty consistent right the way down into the very small sizes. So 
this looks pretty, pretty optimistic. So the stack height on a 56 is 606 millimeters. Now this is quite high for what I was expecting, but it's still um, not as high as, as a Cannondale Synapse, definitely not as high as a Giant Defy. And I definitely think that if you are uh, poor hip mobility and you need a more upright position, then one of those two bikes might suit you better for just trying to get a more upright position. But it's definitely more than a Super 6 and definitely more than a Madone. So you're still getting like a, a road bikey type of feel, but it's just a slap bang in the middle like it should be with an endurance bike. The reach is slap bang in the middle as well. They've absolutely nailed it. But importantly, the head angle, the thing that really dictates that, um, that high speed stability handling is at 70.8 degrees. Now to put that in perspective, a Synapse has now gone to 73.3, which is super steep. And remember they pulled that fork rake back as well. So it's, that Synapse has now definitely become a low speed maneuverability type of bike. You know, think um, urban environments, cycle path networks, you know, that sort of thing. Um, and then the Super 6 is kind of the whole throw it round a bend in a sort of cyclo sport, um, a cyclo criterium type of geometry. And then the gravel range has been becoming that 70, 71 degree head angle. But the downside of those was that the bottom bracket became a little bit too high. So what this new look has done is given us that, um, that head angle, it's given us the trail, you know, the angle of attack of the front wheel, but it's also kept the bottom bracket low as well, which is gonna be awesome for road cycling. So I don't know about you, but in terms of what I think of as endurance, which is those big long rides out in the countryside, taking on the, you know, the big climbs, the big descents, the, you know, the rutted roads of the countryside, I, th this is it. <laughs> it's like they've almost, yeah, they, they've nailed it. And I really, really want to get one in. I'm gonna to come to that in a second. Now. Other things you really want from your endurance bike is you want that reliability. You do not want to be out on like a big 160 kilometer day through the French Alps or through the Mallorcan countryside or whatever and have a mechanical because of some fragile component or bit of electronic equipment that you just can't fix. So I'm really happy that they've put some really good quality stuff on here. So some of the highlights, a standard 27.2 millimeter round seat post. Absolutely every bike shop in the world will have one of them. You just, you can adjust that. You can put in whatever layback you want. Brilliant. A T47 bottom bracket uh, with a token ninja bottom bracket installed. Now, T47, if you're not aware, is like the bigger version of BSA. So it's a threaded bottom bracket, but it's a bigger version. It's developed by Chris King. It's definitely been adopted by more and more bike brands as you know, the 30 millimeter or the SRAM 29 point whatever millimeter standard of the crankshaft has become much, much more popular. But the downside of the bigger cranks was that you had to run quite compromised bearings. With a T47, you can still run good quality, durable, bigger bearings um, on those bigger cranks. And so the T47, just fantastic. I'm all over that. Tire clearance up to 34C. Now there is actually a plus version where you can get up to 45 wide as well. So I love the fact they put that option in. For those of you that are sort of blurring the lines between endurance road and gravel, there's a really compelling reason to go for the, four, the, the plus size and go for those 45s and then have a bike which is so versatile that you can essentially just swap wheels. Um, even down to a 650B wheel on the Optimum as well. So um, Optimum Plus, which is awesome. Um, the cable routine is all internal, except what they've done around the stem is rather than trying to feed cables through a very small aperture in the stem and down through the head tube, they've done this really quite clever way that sort of goes underneath the stem. So the cable routine still looks like a reasonable, good, um, good radius is, which is good. 1400 grams for frame and fork. <laughs> uh, I think that's great. And if this is anything like the build quality that we normally expect from look, this is this is looking pretty tasty, I think. Um, so, 
prices. So if you haven't seen already, what are you expecting from prices? Now, it's coming in and the, the UK prices, I, I rang up the distributor this morning to try and get an idea on prices and they're still not completely dialed here in the UK. But the Look Optimum Satin Black with the mechanical 11 speed Altegra is coming in at around £3,700. Now, I couldn't compare that directly with the Trek and the Specialized, but it gets pretty close. So Trek Demane SL5 Generation 4 with 105 mechanical, 3,400. The Specialized Roubaix Sport 105 mechanical at 3,005. So this look with an Altegra is only a little bit more expensive. And what about frame only? Yep, you can actually buy a frame only at £2,100 frame only. I, that's that's mind blowing. That's with looks build quality, their lifetime warranty, dealer support, you know, a wind space frame. If you want to benchmark something direct from factory, 1,500 quid. This is 600 pounds more for a look bike backed up with a fantastic dealer network. The accountability is all there. I um, I can't wait to get my hands on one. <laughs> I've I've placed my order, <laughs> um, and I'm gonna let you know as soon as I get it. But but right now, if you have ordered or are thinking of ordering an endurance bike, I think this is definitely worth a look bef <laughs> um, before you go too much further. I um, yeah I. I wasn't expecting that. What do you guys think? Um, let me know. <laughs> have you ordered the bike? Are you looking at this thinking, yeah, or have you spotted something that I haven't spotted? Do you still think there's something that's not quite quite, quite right with this? Is it too good to be true? Um, I honestly think that this is evidence of someone in their design department just observing, seeing what's happening in this category, have thought the same way as I thought, that it's bonkers, and said, we know what to do we can fill that gap yeah let me know hope you enjoyed this episode if you did please think about subscribing and yeah get into those comments and let me know what you think cheers